Today's sponsor is Audible.com, a leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. And PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at one of their three retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. All right, everybody, welcome to the Touch of Gaming podcast. This is episode number 150. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison, and joining me, as always, Jared Schultz. Jared, how are you doing, my friend? I'm really, really good. How are you, Lloyd? I am really good as well, except both of my teams are losing at the exact same time. So if if I was actually watching the TV right now, I might actually... I might actually rage out and and pass from all the rage, pass out from all the rage. But thankfully, I'm podcasting instead, so I don't have to even focus on on the Jets losing and the Bombers losing. Doesn't matter. I, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right. Well, let's uh, let, let's do this. Uh, how, how you been? It's it's been uh, it's been a week since we last talked. Any any fun stuff? Anything new? Any other crazy stuff? I did a pull up. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. No, my goal at the start of the year was to be able to do a pull up, and I did one. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good goal to have then. I thought it was just you were making a joke or something. No, like I seriously, their pull ups are hard. Oh, they are. They were hard. Yeah. They were hard when I was fifty pounds. Yeah. <laughs> now they're like way harder because I'm more than fifty pounds. Yeah. Exactly. Add a hundred and fifty to that. To yeah. Me. So I I did a pull up. That that's my exciting news. That is that's pretty exciting. If that was your goal and you met your goal, I am very proud for you, Steve. Uh, Jared, I was going to say Stephen because I just recorded the Nintendo Pulse, but I uh, know this is Jared. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I probably could not even do a pull up without wrenching out a shoulder or something. I would I would severely injure my. I could do it, but I would be in worse shape after. It would not be funny. It would not be cool. Yeah, I was I was pretty proud of myself. Although I have been playing a lot of video games, so my thumb I could probably just do it with my thumbs. Like just thumb. then I could just go thumb like up. this, and I'd be I'd be launching myself into the air because I've been working out the thumbs uh, pretty darn good. Yeah, that days. probably wouldn't work. <laughs> Come on, oh ye of little faith, Jared. Oh well, <laughs> maybe it's faith. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Cool. So, uh, anything new else besides else new besides uh, pull ups and and other things? Nah. No, I'm just trying to stall for time because I'm trying to tweet out the fact that we're live right now because I didn't do that before we started. So, um, I'm hoping that you'll talk a little bit so I can finish this message. Yeah, I don't have anything else. I was just really <laughs> proud of myself. I've been doing all sorts of exercises and, and and now I can do like one and then like can't quite do the next one and I keep doing like one pull up and i did like five sets of one yesterday and so today my arms hurt that's good you know okay I'm, i've tweeted so that's good but you know that's how it starts i mean it's like the um you can get apps to your phone which are um like push-ups a day um where you do they have like this push-up regimen so you do as many push-ups as you can and then you tell your iphone it's like i can do 12 and then it makes this regimen where it it, it eventually increases it all to the point where you can do 100 uh, five reps of 100 and uh, or five reps of 20 to equal 100 and then even more as as it continues and it's just doing it every day um increases it it's amazing how resilient your muscles are even if you haven't used them for a while yeah cool man well let's uh let's get into uh, the show what have you jared schultz been playing jared schultz recently on are you your trying to, like, ios devices name? You're Jared trying to say Schultz. my name enough so that you remember that you're talking to me and not Steven? No, I just, I thought it was, I just wanted to say your name multiple times. All right. That's it. Hey, and, and isn't this like a, a big show? Because it's like the, I don't know, what is it called? Like, is it like sesquicentennial? Like one, 150? <laughs> I, I have no idea. It's I think the, it's sesquicentennial. It's the cent and a half uh, episode of uh, the TOG. Sesquicentennial. I think that's it. <laughs> yep. That's Sesquicentennial. A, wow. I learned something today because I did not know this had a word. I didn't know people were bored enough to make a word up for something like this. But uh, I'm glad they were. 
You want to know actually how I know that? They had the 150th birthday of my state when I was young, and we had, you know, when you're like in elementary school, they're like, hey, we're going to celebrate the sesquicentennial. So for some reason, I still remember that. Anyway, what have I been playing? <laughs> what have you been playing? Uh, I have been playing... <laughs> um, so a game that came out yesterday called Fading Fairy Tales. It's by Crescent Moon. It's kind of a little bit of a tactics game where you take the role of many different fairy tale characters like Little Red Riding Hood or things like that and you or the wolf, you know, that Little Red Riding Hood is, you know, going with. And they you go and you fight like bad guys. Like right now I'm fighting like the minions of Pinocchio. Um, it's pretty cool and it's free. So, um, I'm, I'll play that one more. I think I've only played like six or seven, uh, levels. So I'll, I'll play that one a lot more here. And, um, <laughs> um, the chat room just made me laugh. I, you would think I would have learned my lesson many times over that I don't you read do, the chat room you, while you I never, you never look at the other person talking on video or read the chat room unless you want to be distracted. Exactly. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. I need to play it some more. It seems to be a fun little strategy game, um, where you, you know, level up and, go and get better items and it seems to be a fairly forgiving method of freemium at least at the moment so uh fading fairy tales by crescent moon interesting game uh football seasons so i am a massive board game player i really really like board games and um i would this one was touted to me as a deck builder which is one of my favorite types of board games i, I play tons and tons of um I really like deck builders. There's, uh, you know, like Dominion and games that most people probably haven't heard of. But uh, this game was supposed was was touted as a deck builder with soccer, even though it's called Football Seasons. It's you know using British football, um, and it's it's interesting because you have like your little characters that are cards, and you send them to do different do different things every month. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm not sure that I really like it a lot at this point. It's just not, I don't know if it's the theme or just kind of the way it works together or the fact that I feel like it's not really as strategic as I would like, but I'm not a huge fan. Uh, then I've been playing this little game called infinity blade three. How is it? I, I haven't picked it up yet. Um, which is odd for me because I, I insta buy both of the other infinity blades, but I think I'm, kind of done with the franchise i don't know hey is it is it good is it worth is it worth picking up for seven bucks uh i don't know it it looks amazing right um it it is just incredible it's 2.1 gig to so just remember that that it's going to take a lot of space so you'll probably need like three and a half gigs to install it you need Mm -hmm. because you need almost double to do the install Yep. Wow, that's and and right lot. now I can't update it because I don't have enough free space for the update. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. But it's it's interesting. There's now two characters, so you can either play as uh, the main guy, Cyrus, or you can play as a girl, um, and she has a completely different set of weapons and armor and everything else that you get for her. So that's that's really interesting. Um, they don't play very differently, except that they level up separately. So if you play with Cyrus for a long time, then it feels like a step back when you go to the girl and she's, you know, five or 10 levels behind or vice versa. Uh, they have a lot of interesting little systems in it. They made it much more story driven. So you're not going through the same little area over and over and over and, and not doing anything else. Um, which is, is fine. Um, it feels a little strange, though, because with it not now being more story-driven and you're going through a smaller area that's, say, you know, six battles or seven battles and then losing to the end guy, it just feels a little bit different because, you know, you feel like it's supposed to be story-driven, whereas in the prior entries, it made a bit more sense why you were respawning quickly. Right. And I would say that it doesn't make quite as much sense with it being so story-driven. Uh, they have a whole slew of new bad guys, and in fact, that's probably one of the coolest things about it. Um, they have a black market 
merchant that comes around and you can buy some stuff for cheaper. Mm-hmm. You find not only cash bags, but you find uh, potion ingredients and then you can go and craft potions, which is kind of neat. You know, then you can go and like drink a potion that, you know, when you kill the next guy, it gives you extra experience or, or whatever the, the case may be. And, you know, you can use better ingredients so that it lasts more than one battle. And so that's kind of cool. Um, hmm. uh, it's very interesting. It's very a lot bigger. There's a cool variety of bad guys, uh, much more varied um, environments that you're fighting in. But when it all comes down to it, it is very much the same game. Um, okay. You know, you're swiping to parry, you're swiping right. to do everything else. So, how, how is it is, worth it? How epic is the dragon? Is is a dragon really epic, and is it, or is it more annoying than epic? I have not gotten to the dragon. Oh, yet. you haven't gone to the dragon yet. Okay. No, he's deeper. I'm like in chapter three, I think. I so he, each I, chapter, from when they were describing it, it, sounded like the dragon would be there the whole game, hounding you, kind of like the um, the guy from Resident Evil Three that would keep pounding through walls and chasing you but i guess i have not not yet seen the dragon okay all right so he's probably pretty epic but i haven't seen him um a game i talked about a few weeks ago cave mania um i really really liked it because it had a little bit of like match three mixed with like civilization type building uh it's now out in in the world worldwide so this is me telling you to go get it and to be my friend on it so that I can unlock the next levels without paying money for them. Um, I've been playing it some more. I still really like it and it, it's nice and challenging. Um, I, it's just a cool game. It's, it's one of those ones that you don't think it'll work, but it does work out. Okay. So, um, check it out. It's, it's free. And uh, like, uh, I kind of explained before, um, once you get past the first 30 levels, you have to have so many friends that are playing it to continue to unlock more levels. Or else you have to pay 99 cents for the next 15 levels and 99 cents for the 15 levels after that and so on. So, yeah, that's Cave Mania. And then I've been playing more Where's My Water 2. It's kind of one of the games that I pick up and you know maybe I'm on a quick break or whatever and I'll play two levels of it. Um, it's still very much where's my water. Um, I think I've talked about it enough before, (laughs) and I don't really need to talk about it that much because if you've played where's my water, it's just the same thing with an annoying timer. Um, And besides that, it's it's very, very similar to the old one. Oh, yeah, and power-ups that they give you a few, and (laughs) I don't know. I I rarely ever use them, so. Right. Fun. Um, it's worth picking up, though. I mean, if it's free and you're like, where's my water? Might as well check and it you, out. And you don't like want to play it in an epic run, you know, like if, if you're, if you, you can't really, you're going to spend a lot of money if you try to just play it straight through. But uh, if you just play it a little bit of a time, it works great. Oh, cool. and, and by the way, the one thing I have to say, though, is you have to go into the taskbar and shut it down or because it, um, uh, for some reason, I've had it quite a few times now that I haven't played for a day, and I've come back and it's right where I left it on my energy bar. Um, mm. And the only way I've found to make sure that that doesn't happen is by actually shutting the game completely that down. That is horrible. I think it's a bug. Yeah, it must be. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah, so it it doesn't charge your energy while you're actually playing. So. Nice. Anyway, that's what I've been playing. What have you been playing, Lloyd? Um, I've, I've been playing a little bit as well. Um, Angry Birds Star Wars 2, I've been playing a fair bit of that. Um, I'm going to do a review in this episode of that one. Um, also picked up a game called Shadowrun Returns. Uh, it came out for iOS uh, at 10 bucks. And oh, this, I'm really interested in this one. It's really good. Um, this is a um, the iOS version of the Kickstarter game. I, I Kickstarted the PC version of it and um, have... have basically played almost nothing on the PC because I don't PC game, um, which is really kind of odd that I would actually kickstart it, uh, I guess. Um, but I really wanted it to uh, to actually um, to make, um, but uh, I'll make it out um, there. So I picked it up on iOS and I got to say it is really, really well done. Um, so what it is, is it's a uh, it's a turn based RPG. 
<clears throat> that is set in the Shadowrun world. Um, if you're not familiar with Shadowrun, it was um, it was like a pen and paper RPG from um, the late 80s, early 90s. Um, there was a couple of games that came out on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. That's how how old this franchise is. And basically, it's um, it, it talks about a world where um, magic has come back to the earth. And in coming back, um, now people have have magic powers or can have magic powers, and it kind of accelerated everything. Um, and with magic coming back, um, other races have come back as well. So there's elves and and a, a bunch of other races that have that have come in. And um, the game is set in a world where technology kind of rules the world. Um, and and then magic came in. So now you have this weird kind of um, tech and and magic all kind of um, fusing together. So there's people called Deckers, which uh, basically uh, like quite literally enter the Internet um, through connections on their heads. Um, then there's mages and there's... Um, urban assassins and there's a whole bunch of all these weird weird uh, classes <clears throat> which is when i um what i really liked about the pen and paper rpg and and playing the the earlier games like i played a lot of the genesis game um this came out it's uh it's kind of a three-quarter view isometric uh top down ish i guess uh turn-based rpg um Really, really well done. Um, no voice acting, um, unfortunately. I, I was hoping there'd be some voice acting in it, although I knew that there wouldn't be because I kickstarted it. Um, but yeah, it's um, I, I've, I'm through the first few missions, and it's really good. Um, the only downfall with this one compared to the PC version is the PC version has um, level creation tools <clears throat> and kind of a level store where you can actually go and download all these um, additional levels iOS version doesn't have that yet, um, or it won't have that rather. Um, but what they're going to be doing is um, periodically bundling the best um, user created levels um, as patches, and you would just download them, and they would show up in the game for you to kind of kind of take place in. Um, people have have done a lot of these levels. Like uh, there's been groups of modders and 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 people that have remade most of the original pen and paper uh, books that came out. So all the campaigns that were released. Um, when when this uh, role playing game first came out, um, they've been remade, um, and there's been some some new content and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Shadowrun Returns, um, pretty darn amazing. I'm I'm enjoying it. You'd really like it, Jared. Jared, it's um, tactical, um, but it has an RPG um, uh, kind of twist to it, and it's really unforgiving. And I know you like really hard kind of games. Like you you're a big fan of Fire Emblem, but playing it so that you you basically reset. Um, every match, if you don't make your your guys survive, um, this game would be that for you. You you'd really kind of enjoy that, I think. Yeah, it seems really interesting. I I've been tempted <clears throat> to I was tempted to buy it when it came out on PC, and this is half the price. Um, it just would ha- require me to get iPad time, which is sometimes difficult. So <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's it's a I'll, fun game. I'll be picking it up on some platform mm-hmm. at some point here very soon. Yeah. Yeah, definitely check it out if, if you if you are into these types of games. I, I think you guys would like it. Um, I'm going to play more, obviously, and uh, hopefully do a review in the future. Um, but it is really fun. And I've been playing iOS 7. Um, with iOS 7, uh, I'm, I'm finding some really awesome things that I like. Um, probably the coolest is um, I use a podcasting app on iOS um, called uh, uh, Instacast. And uh, they've updated for iOS 7. Uh, and the best part about it is if you turn this feature on, it does background updating. So whenever it gets a push notification that there's a new podcast available in a podcast feed, um, at the same time as displaying that push notification to you, it starts a download of that MP3. And so when I open up Instacast, all my podcasts are right there. Um, Wait, where is that? Um, it's an Instacast. Uh, you just have to update to the latest version, and by default, it's enabled. Um, but then you can also go and um, and uh, basically turn it on in the settings somewhere um, huh. for some reason. I'll have to go look at it. I'm I'm opening it on my iPad. I use it on my iPhone, so now it's asking me to resync all my content from the cloud, um, which probably isn't going to work so well for me. <laughs> it's downloading. Oh, don't do this right now. Merging, merging merging so i can't tell you because it's 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 loading it's doing no problem i'll go play with it but yeah no that's cool yeah it's really cool if you have push notifications turned on i think by default it will start downloading those mp3 files otherwise uh, you can go into the settings and uh and and add them 
uh, add it, turn it on and, and uh, do that that way. Um, but yeah, it works really, really good. Um, let me see, is that under subscriptions? No, it's probably under notifications. Um, but yeah, it's, it's in there somewhere. I can't remember where I found it, but, uh, it automatically does it now, which is really, really nice. So you just open up your iPad or your iPhone or whatever you use to listen to your podcasts and all the latest episodes are just there waiting for you. Uh, pretty darn sweet. But yeah, that's about it. Um, I think the, the biggest thing I've been playing is Grand Theft Auto 5 on my PS3. So that's been taking all gaming time away from everything else. Um, so um, unfortunately, I'm playing too much iOS stuff because of it. But uh, I'm uh, I'm getting to the to the kind of the end of the campaign. So hopefully I'll be jumping into some more iOS stuff in the near future. And then Grand Theft Auto Online comes out. So then I'll be playing that some more. It's going to be really tough to get gaming in. Jared is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm going to have to kick you off the show because you're not playing anything. Yeah, anymore. I'll have to I'll have to secede and, and, and give my, my podcaster hat to someone else to take over the hosting um, with you, Jared. And, and you can take on the Grand Theft Auto yeah, podcast? Yeah, I'll start up a Grand Theft Auto podcast, um, which will, I'm sure there's already a million of them, but uh, what's a million and one? That would be good. <laughs> All right, um, let's uh, take a small break before we get into the news this week. We actually got a fair bit of news to do, so let's take a small break and talk to you guys about Audible.com. They are probably the best, or I'm not saying probably, they are absolutely the best source for audiobooks there um, on the internet. Um, if you're looking for any book, um, they they probably have it. They have 150,000 titles to choose from. So um, I, I've used them for uh, a long time. Jared, I know you have as well. Yeah, I listen to them a lot. In fact, uh, just recently I've been listening to a book. Uh, I started it earlier this week, and it's about video games, or actually video game developers. It's called You. That's just Y-O-U. And it's by Austin Grossman. Right. And Should it, I play a little it, sample of it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let's do that. office manager gave me over the phone. An anonymous office complex at the far limit of the red line, past Harvard and Porter, where Cambridge gave out entirely, lapsed into empty lots and restaurants on the wrong side of Alewife Brook Parkway, and then into wetlands, brackish water, and protected species like sweet flag and pickerel weed. All right, so it sounds sounds kind of interesting. Sounds kind of, uh, ki- kind of, um, I don't know, fantasy ish. Um, yeah, it's a little it, bit of it's like not a, a fantasy suspense. book. Yeah, it's a little bit like a suspense and trying to figure out, and it's it's all based in this game of, or of this world of video game developers. You know, it's based at um, this set or this company, this fictional company of video game developers, and they they keep talking about you know their competition with Epic and uh, an exclusive deal with Nvidia and stuff like that. So it's it's just interesting because they're definitely using kind of the video game as a settings as a backdrop to uh, have this cool um, action thriller novel so I'm not all the way through it but I'm really enjoying it so far awesome well thanks for that recommendation if you listening would like to also listen to this book um, you can buy it off their website you can just sign up for an audible account and buy it for twenty three dollars and sixty cents um, or how about how about getting it for free um, I, I think getting it for free is a bit of a better deal Jared don't you don't you agree with me Free's a good price. Uh, yeah, so if you want to listen to it, Audible has it with over 150,000 titles to choose from from virtually every genre out there. You're going to find what you're looking for. And you can get this book or any other on audible.com for free uh, as well as a 30-day free trial just by signing up at audiblepodcast.com slash touchofgaming. So if you go to audiblepodcast.com forward slash touchofgaming, T-O-U-C-H-O-F-G-A-M-I-N-G, you can get the book for free. Um, which is um, better than uh, twenty three dollars and sixty cents last time I checked. Um, That's a lot better. Yeah, so you get a you get the book for free, and you get a thirty day free trial. Check out some of their other uh, features, and this book is yours to keep for free for the rest of your life. Um, so I do urge you guys listening in to check it out. AudiblePodcast dot com slash Touch of Gaming. All right, Jared, uh, let's get into the news, man. Um, got some good stuff this week um i i think you're gonna basically love this next one so why don't you talk about um stardock entertainment 
Yeah, so one of my all-time favorite developers on the PC is uh, Stardock. And so Stardock is kind of their private company, which changes how they you know can do some things. And they've come out with a couple of really great games, uh, probably the best being like uh, Sins of the Solar Empire, uh, Galactic Civilizations. They're, they're really famous for the 4X type of games, which is great. Right. Um, they also... This company, they went and they had a game called Elemental that they brought out. And the game was really busted when it came out. It just wasn't that much fun. And so they gave away their next game to anyone who pre-ordered this game because they felt bad. And not only that, then they brought out a massive expansion pack that completely changed the game that was already you know, pretty good. And they gave that away to people who pre-ordered. And I was one of those people. So I, it was just, it's the coolest thing that I've ever seen a company do. And, you know, very customer oriented. Well, they have announced that they are creating a new division called Stardock Mobile. And they have announced three games. Uh, the first one's going to be out uh, next month. It's called Dead Man's Draw. It looks, um, it's, it's just a very interesting game. Uh, you know, it looks like kind of a card game with uh, some really cool art. Um, and then just some of the other games that they're talking about and that, that they announced also look very interesting. So I'm really excited about it just because, uh, you know, as people know, I really like the strategy games and that type of thing. And, and they're really well known for it and they're going to be bringing stuff out to mobile. So um, they're initially focusing on iOS, and uh, which is great because that means I can play it um, and talk about it on the show. And uh, yeah, so I'm really excited for it, and uh, we're starting for Dead Man's Draw that we can look for next month. Um, so that's, uh, that's, I'm really excited about that piece of news. <laughs> I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. Uh, I'm really I, excited. I had no idea that you would be the one that would like that one. You're such a board game geek. It's it's awesome. Well, and and they're like one of my favorite developers. I mean, they're so customer oriented that you know it's just great to see them <laughs> trying to do mobile stuff. Um, you know, they they hired the guy that did the. Uh, there is this thing called the Fall from Heaven mod for Civilization Four. Right. And this guy was totally working for like Oracle or something like this. The guy that. Uh, that did it, the mod, and uh, they went and picked him up out of his job in Oracle and hired him to to run <laughs> their gaming division, um, which is cool that you can just make such an awesome mod that you know a company notices and yeah, that's, offers you a job. That's kind of like that an, early, an early '90s thing where someone would make a, a really great Quake mod, and next thing you know, they'd be hired by ID. Um, and it doesn't really happen too much, uh, too much, too much recently. I don't, I haven't heard much of that stuff anyway. So yeah. <clears throat> I, I'm I'm eagerly waiting to see what's coming from Stardock Mobile. Cool, awesome. Well, let's uh, move on uh, to our next story. Um, this is a surprise announcement, which really isn't a surprise, and that is Cut the Rope Two will be coming. Um, Omnom will return in Cut the Rope Two. It was announced by Zepto Lab um, that this will be coming out, and it's kind of a no brainer um, because Cut the Rope is a huge franchise for them. They actually sell. Omnom stuffies and toys and t-shirts and all that stuff and um, <laughs> I will switch off of Jared's camera because he just ran across the house for some strange reason um, but yeah they um, they have everything um, in, in Cut the Rope right now uh, as far as merchandise um, so I don't see why um, they wouldn't release more. Um, the, the last version that they released was the, the time traveling one. And um, this looks like it's going to be um, just more of the kind of original cut the rope stuff. So um, very cool. I, I can't wait. I enjoyed the original and I look forward to uh, checking this one out as well. I was a little confused by it personally because... I, I didn't really think that they were going to bring out a number two. <laughs> there you um, go. I, I saw you get up and sl and like fly across your house. I was like, okay, someone's breaking into Jared's house. So I'm going to, I'm just going to like not, uh, not mention anything right now. And then I come back to you and you have Om Nom sitting in front of your face. <laughs> That's right. But great. I was, I just thought that the other ones that they were just going to keep bringing out, you know, like experiments and time travel and all that, and that they weren't going to bring out another numbered sequel. So, Hopefully it's good. Um, you know, I 
where's my water kind of ruined that one a little bit, but uh, hopefully Zepto Labs does a good job. Um, I think that their other game was not quite as successful, so they're going to go back to cut the rope and make some money before they try something new. Right. All right, bye, Om Nom. <laughs> Are you, you sure you don't want to keep it there for the rest of the show? Well, if he's cuter. <laughs> well, yes, he does have big teeth that kind of point out in all directions. It is kind of cute. All right, moving on um, to our next story. Um, there was an interesting kind of little battle going on this week. Um, there was an article that was posted over at Giant Bomb um, that basically said um, that Apple paid EA a truckload of money to delay the release of an Android version of Plants vs. Zombies 2. Um, okay, so pause right there. What did you think when you heard that? Uh, no. There's no reason why Apple would ever pay someone money for exclusivity because people make stuff for Apple first anyway. See, I got kind of excited that maybe Apple was taking the gaming market a bit more seriously. Yeah, I don't think they have. Well, yeah, that, see, that would have been good. But I think all they have to do is basically make deals to give people um, like game of the game of the week. And I mean, that that's really all that you need. Um, but anyway, yeah. So um, basically what, what happened was um, there was a internal town hall meeting. Uh, I'm looking for the guy's name and I can't find it. Oh, yeah. Frank Frank Gibbo, who's the head of EA Labels. And his quote is, um, is this. It's Apple gave us a truckload of money to delay the Android version of Plants of Zombies 2. Um, that, that's funny. Uh, Giant Bomb also says it's unclear what exactly a trunk of trunk load of money means. And we have no further details on the apparent agreement between Apple and EA. So this that's Giant Bomb being kind of Giant Bomb. Um, but Almost immediately, Apple came out and they denied all, all, everything to do with this. They're like, nope, we didn't pay for anything. Um, that is is fully untrue. And then it kind of sat for about a day and a half, um, where um, there was more people that came out and said, yeah, actually, at this meeting, that's exactly what was said, um, and and that was about it. So there was a few little tiny little updates to the story that way. Um, Apple didn't have anything else to say. And then later the week, um, EA actually came right out and said, um, it's it's a shame that uh, uh, what was basically said as an off-the-cuff joke at an internal meeting was broadcast on the internet. Um, Apple did not pay us anything to do anything with Plants vs. Zombies 2, and we look forward to working with both Apple and Android in future. It was I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but it was something like that, where they basically said, this was a joke that was said at an internal meeting, and it shouldn't have made it to the internet, and we are really sorry, and we're kind of scared that Apple will not feature any of our games anymore, um, was kind of the undertone of that message. So Yeah. I don't know. Um, it could have been interesting, really wasn't, and um, it just shows what basically um, online people will do, is one a giant bomb broke the story, and then you had every single blog um, talking about it you had all the apple blogs saying no that would never happen ea should be paying apple for for placements ea should be giving all their games to apple first because they got to support apple and you had all the android fan blogs saying apple is the devil they're ruining the the ecosphere or the ecosphere of of gaming and uh everybody should boycott apple for what they're doing and then you had people in the middle saying oh is that a story <laughs> it was just this weird collection of um explosions from different groups of people online yeah, because here's the thing. Even if they did, this happens all the time in the console market. So who cares? You know, it's it's something that 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 platform owners do uh, to get people to their platform uh, exclusives. So anyway, that was my thought on it. But it was kind of a funny little thing to follow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it would be great if Apple did things like that. Because like you said, Jared, it just shows that Apple is serious and they want to to buy people like I, i'd love apple to go out and buy ea <laughs> just like go out and buy the company for like dip into their big big money bin that they have that they dive around in uh pull out some money and just hand it over and say yeah all your stuff is ours um thanks and then only make games for for apple or something crazy like they could do something like that if they're really serious obviously ea wouldn't sell but there might be another company that would that would do that and that would really show how serious Apple was. Um, I don't see that happening anytime in the future. Um, but I don't know. 
where there's smoke, there's fire, I guess. Maybe there was some sort of um, deal. Um, maybe it wasn't monetary, but maybe it was, we'll give you um, prime f um, placement for the next couple games you come out with if you bring out this game for us first and um, give us a month exclusivity or something. Maybe it was something like that that didn't have money um, involved. Um, so both of them are kind of true. <laughs> yeah, you definitely think that there must have been some sort of deal there or else why would the guy ever say they gave truckloads of money? Like, yeah, totally. He, he wouldn't just make that up necessarily so it does it does make you wonder but what actually happened is completely unclear and is 100 percent speculation at this point exactly so um interesting story it's uh good stuff to read i guess and and follow um probably doesn't mean um much at the end of the day all right well moving on um there's a kickstarter going on right now for a game called shantae risky's uh revenge or no sorry shantae half genie hero um shantae is um is a platformer um that started out on the game boy color um there's been dsi versions um but there's actually an ios version shantae was released um about a year ago i guess on the App Store at Shantae, Shantae's Risky Revenge, there's a free version and the full version, which I believe was like $5 or $7. Um, well, now it is free. So if you want to check out uh, Shantae uh, Risky Revenge um, in celebration of their Kickstarter project meeting its Kickstarter goal, uh, you can go do that right now. You can uh, download it for free, download the full version uh, so you don't get the not full version <laughs> for free because the full version is free. And... Um, yeah, check it out. It's uh, it's a great game. Uh, definitely worth downloading. And uh, you get to play a, a little magic user and a platformer uh, that kind of saves her town, which is a lot of fun. So uh, do check that one out while it's free. Um, next up is a little bit of a teaser, um, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. And um, with iOS 7, um, there was a, uh, a, I guess, a bunch of games coming out that supported a um, an iOS controller. But Apple hasn't really said much about it other than uh, developers. Um, developers have talked about it. Um, Apple really hasn't said anything. Um, but it looks like we have some actual hardware manufacturers starting to talk about it. Um, Logitech is the first one um, that is really making a splash. Um, and they're basically showing off something. Um, basically, the image that they're teasing right now, something missing, find out more. If you click that, you can go over to Logitech's website and sign up for their mailing list. Um, but um, yeah, it basically shows a guy holding a floating iPhone, um, holding what looks like a, I don't know, PlayStation 3 controller type thing, uh, but you can't see what the device is. It's invisible. Um, but I guess that means that um, this stuff is coming soon. I don't know, Jared, are you excited for getting your hands on an iOS controller? Yep. I think it'll be great. I yeah. uh, really hope that, um, you know, lots of people start installing it. And yeah. uh, I hope that they make one that's nice and portable so that you know, a lot of games you can play with touch screens, but I'm sure or there's quite a few games that would really benefit from just a quick controller. And and I'd love to have one that I could, you know, carry in my backpack or something like that. Yeah, like I'm holding one right now. I'm holding the 8-bitty, which is a tiny little controller. I love it. This thing is awesome. It's Bluetooth. You turn it on. Uh, you put your iPad or whatever um, on a stand. So it's just sitting there and you can play games. Problem is there's about 12 games that support it. Okay, maybe there's like 70 or 80, but nothing new recently has come out that really supports it, except for like Mikey Shorts um, or Mikey Hooks supported it. Um, I'd love every game to support this, um, but obviously that's not the case. Apple has the new spec. Um, the problem is 8-bitty is basically um, showing up to your device's keyboard. The new devices show up as uh, a game controller. So the 8-bitty can't even take advantage of this new support that all these games are coming out with. Um, I hope there's a new version of the 8-bitty that supports it because I like the having this little tiny thing in my backpack um, with me wherever I go. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's um, it's it's cool. I, I hope what, whatever Logitech comes out with is awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing what it is. I signed up for the mailing list so I can uh, hear what it is. Um, when we know more, you guys will definitely know more. But um, this makes it really exciting. There's been a whole bunch of AAA games that have been coming out. And one of the features that they list is uh, iOS controller support. It sounds like what Apple is doing, um, obviously, it could not 
be true. But what it, to me, what it sounds like, since only AAA games seem to be putting this in their sh- in their notes, is Apple's gearing up for kind of a a super launch where they're going to basically launch a new section in the app store. They're going to have all this media blitz and they're going to be showing off the multiple controllers that are available with a dozen or 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 really awesome games that are immediately playable with this device. And um, then you can go and buy the Logitech one or the whatever other one, um, the Nyko, the Mad Cats, the Mad Cats, the whatever company has signed an agreement with Apple to make these things as long as they follow the spec. So they have um, they have shoulder buttons, they have four face buttons, they have two analog sticks. Um, it'll work with pretty much any game that supports it. Um, looking through some of the developer documentation um, as a de- as a developer, adding support for it is pretty easy. And you're actually adding support for um, like analog stick one up, <laughs> analog stick one down, uh, button one, button two, button three, button four, shoulder button one, shoulder button two. So it looks like it's going to be pretty universal. So as a developer, when you add support for it, you're going to be um, assured that your controller will work with um, or your game rather will work with any controller that will come out as long as it follows the spec. Really exciting. I can't wait for these devices to come out. I will buy the first really good one that comes out on the market. And probably a couple of the other ones because I'm stupid that way. Um, but I, I'm really looking forward to it. If, like I said, if um, if Think Geek comes out with a new 8 bitty that supports the new spec, I will buy it. Um, even though this one doesn't have analog sticks, um, I, I would buy it anyway, just because I like the form factor. So if they come with something like this with um, that conforms fully to the spec, um, I, I would buy it in an instant um, and uh, have another 8 bitty in my in my. Uh, laptop bag uh, that I carry around with me wherever I go. So I don't know. Um, really excited. But um, but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's good. And I, I can't wait for more news. So um, yeah, let's move on. Jared, uh, what else do you have to talk about before we get into the reviews? Yeah, just one last thing. Um, coming up in like five weeks now, crazy enough, uh, there's Extra Life. Um, so it's a gaming marathon for charity. I play every year because I have, you know, some some nieces and uh, and a nephew and, and now my son that are all seen at these chil- children's miracle network hospitals, which you play for. So, basically, you play video games or board games or a mix um, for 24 hours, and you get pledges to support you. Um, and it's a lot of fun. If you're interested in joining a team, just let me know. Our team this year is Gamers Anonymous. Even though it's really sad because now Star or Earthbound came out, so our name from last year would be much more understood because <laughs> we were the Starmen last year and no one got why. And now I think people might understand why um, because of Earthbound got re-released. Anyway, so uh, if, anyway, it's a really good cause, extra-life.org. Um, it's, this is going to be the fifth year. Uh, the first year they raised 170,000. The second year they raised 450,000. Uh, then 2011 they raised 1.1 million, and last year they raised 2.3 million. So it's it's a really great thing to join up with. And, and if you're interested in joining our team, just let me know, and uh, we'd be happy to have anyone that wants to play along with us. We usually get a big Steam chat room going, and you know people come in and out and say, "Hey, I want to play this game." and Anyone who wants to go play that game goes and joins up with them. So let me know. It's coming up uh, like five weeks, and I think it's on November the 5th. Nope, November the 2nd. <laughs> so, yeah, extra life, awesome. extra-life.org. We'll put, a, we'll put a link in the show notes to uh, your team. Um, so if you can get me that URL, we'll drop it in the show notes. People can just click through and join your team. Will do. If you can find it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Jared, for that. And uh, let's get into uh, game reviews. So why don't you kick it off? Because I'm curious to see what you think of this thing. This thing. This thing um, that, we're, that you're going to talk about. It's like top secret. <laughs> um, so the game I'm going to talk about is a pretty great game. Uh, called Pocket Trains. I know it sounds like a repeat from a game that sucked away a bunch of my life last year called Pocket Planes, but it's a different mode of transportation, right? So um, Pocket Trains, it's by Nimblebit. They, they've they done Nimble Quest. They did uh, Tiny Tower. 
And uh, yeah, now they're doing pocket trains. And so basically the idea is is very similar to pocket planes in that you are taking cargo from one city to another, except one of the big differences, you're taking them along defined routes because obviously trains have to have train tracks. And um, there's some very similar things that... Um, to what's available in, in pocket planes in that, you know, you're moving all these cars. One big thing in pocket planes, you're always worried about people versus, you know, passengers versus cargo. And obviously with trains, you're only worried about cargo. So there's none, none of trying to balance that. So that's one little complexity thing taken out. Um, and then it's, you know, you start, I think everyone starts in Europe and you build out from there. They, one of the cool, fun things in pocket planes was that you were able to, there was like a community function that everyone was working together to take the most um, packages into a certain place. And they seem to have taken that out. Um, I was kind of hoping that it was just while, uh, you know, because we were playing it before the game actually came out, but it actually came out and there still is nothing. Um, and yeah, so basically you take your train, you, you're you in wherever you're at, you know, so maybe I'm in Chicago and I go and I look at the list of jobs. Um, with my current thing, I can move eight cars. And so then I go ahead and, and pick eight cars and then I, I send it off to wherever it needs to go. And I wait some time and it arrives. One interesting thing is in pocket planes, you're able, you had to pay for your fuel every single time you left. And pocket trains has been simplified a little bit in that there's a fuel gauge that fills up over time. And if you, as long as you have enough fuel to do it, it doesn't cost you necessarily anything to just have your fuel go. So that's a little bit different um, because it basically means. You know, technically, you could operate at a loss and and run yourself under in pocket planes, but you can't do that in pocket trains because if you deliver a job, it's profit. Occasionally, your trains will break down, and you either have to use extra parts to get them running again, or you have to pay money. Um, it's it's or not real money. It's you know money that you collect in the game. Um, it's that's pretty much it. I mean, when you you go and you decide to expand, you pay a bunch of money to go to a new city, then you have to decide which train is going to claim that route to go in between those two cities. If you want to start a new city, you have to pay uh, an increasing amount of money. So, you know, that starts off pretty cheap, but then it gets pretty expensive. I think my last train that I put online was like $30,000 or something like that. If you want to change regions, it... You know, you have to buy a license for the new region, um, and this is all using the the just the normal coins you earn. Occasionally, you'll have jobs that earn you bucks. You can turn those bucks into just about anything. Um, you can turn bucks into uh, coins. You can turn bucks uh, into, or you can open crates with them. So sometimes you'll see crates and you'll move them, and then you have to pay bucks to actually open the crate. Um, which is, you know, an interesting way to do it. And in pocket planes, you always had to worry about trying to to get each different part of the plane. And you don't have to worry about that in trains because if you have enough parts, then it just assumes you have the right parts to, to build it. Um, however, there some of them take a lot more parts than they used to, which is fine because they give it to you a lot more often. But when you open a crate, it just gives you one randomly. Um, so, like, right now... I currently have 57 parts that are just sitting in my my yard and I can't actually build any trains because I have, you know, two of this one and five of this one and six of the next one and and I just don't have enough to build any. Uh, it looks like the highest I have right now is one that costs 12 parts um and I'm nowhere near that because, you know, it's it's a rarer one and I don't have that many crates to open. So because of that, it's it's a little bit more frustrating because you have no control over what you get. Um, and so I went for like two days where I, 
I just wasn't getting enough parts in order to start any new trains. And it wasn't that I wasn't getting parts. I just wasn't getting the right parts Mm -hmm. and I had no control over it. So that was kind of frustrating to me. Um, And then now I've been playing this game for about a week and a half, two weeks. And I feel it, I feel a very strong treadmill to it, which is funny because I mean, every other one of their games, well, not everyone, but you know, Tiny towers the same way. Pocket planes. I just I think I'm I'm noticing it faster. Um, maybe it's because there's not quite as much to do. Uh, I just feel like there's no way I can fail. Um, that kind of thing. So it's hard. Um, I think that it's a fun game, and I can see how some people are going to really enjoy it. But for me, I I got a little sick of it. Um, I don't know. Have you been, you've been playing it, right? Uh, a little bit. Um, I've been playing it on my iPhone, uh, when I remember to, um, just because I've been playing so many, um, hours of GTA, um, playing anything else. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Has it been in the cards? Um, and yeah, I, I too kind of, I'm just not feeling it. Maybe I'm kind of in the, the tiny, um, tiny game. <coughs> excuse me the pocket game um kind of overload i'm just i'm not feeling it either yeah for whatever reason it has so much similar but it, it feels like it's missing a little bit of that charm maybe it's just because it feels a little less original or i don't know exactly what it is um you know maybe if your pilots or or train conductors had little different stats that you could actually manage and figure out or, or something just because I, I feel like there's just not enough things to keep me interested in coming back to the game. Right. Um, which kind of makes me sad because I was really looking forward to it being my game for a while that I would check into and I just, maybe it'll, I, I don't, maybe it'll grow on you. I doubt it. I think that it's getting deleted tonight. Oh no. Yeah. It's that bad. So um, for whatever reason, I, I did enjoy it. I think it's worth checking out just to see what they're doing. Uh, it is free, so I mean, you can check it out for nothing. Um, but yeah, you just get in some weird situations. Like right now, I have 180,000 coins, but I I can't really... I, I mean, I can open up new lines, but it just means that my trains have to go further. Uh, right. Because I, I don't have enough parts, even though I have, like I said, 57 parts... Yeah. I don't have another train. That it's sim- I can similar put out. to the the plane parts in pocket planes, where you'd get random parts sometimes, and you'd end up with a bunch of like fuselages or a bunch of tails, and you couldn't make anything, and then you'd have to actually go in and buy the right ones. Like it was really annoying. It seems like this is even more annoying. I haven't run into because I obviously haven't played as much as you. I haven't run into that same issue a- as you did. But, well, and. Um, and then there was only three pieces, right? So this is the key, two key differences. There was yeah, only three true. pieces to collect. And second, there was a way that you could go in for bucks and buy. Whereas in this one, there's no way you for you can go in and bucks with and buy a specific part. It just keeps coming to you randomly. Right. Um, which, yeah, it, it makes it not nearly as much fun. Um, because <clears throat> it's not like you could even spend some money and go fix it because you never know if you're going to get the part that you need um, or if you're just going to get another. What It makes me, it, it almost makes me mad when I find a part to a new train because then, you know, it means that I'm even further away from that one and, and just not getting new trains. So, right. like I said, I have 180,000 80, coins right now, but I can't really do much because <laughs> cause I don't have another train. And I don't know. It's just, it's a little frustrating. The daily, the, there's little daily challenges that pop up. Um, those are kind of fun. It's, it's always um, delivering 75 of something or uh, shipping 50 of something out of a specific city. They do a good job at making sure that the city that you have to go to is one that you have unlocked or that you can unlock with one jump. So it's right next to where you currently are. So it's it, that's kind of nice that you can, you know, you, you're always able to participate in the little activities. But the little activities just give you another crate to open with bucks and, right. you know, like 20 bucks. So it's not really, the payoff <laughs> isn't even that great. So 
Um, yeah, and then you can't like play it for a long time because then the fuel will run out on all your trains. You have to play for a while and then leave it, or else you have to pay bucks. Um, I'm I'm gonna say people should check it out. I think it's an interesting game. I just I don't think that it's it's gonna hold on for me. Um, I'm gonna give it a four out of five, which is still a very good score, but uh, it, it's not like a must check out game. I don't think so. Mm. Your review sounded like a one out of five. I'm surprised for the four out of five. It's still a good game. It's still interesting. And I don't know. <laughs> now you're going to talk me into a lower score. No, I'm not. I'm not not trying to do that at all. That is the the furthest thing on my mind. I just I, I was I was bracing myself. Um, and nah, like I think it's a good game. I just I just don't think <laughs> you're that, not I think it. That there's a few things that are just frustrating enough to turn on, uh, me off to it. Okay. Um, so that I'm not going to keep playing it. And, you know, I have a buddy that loved pocket planes and when it came out, uh, Wednesday night, he played like a ton until all his trains ran out of fuel and then he keeps playing it and he loves it, you know? Um, yeah. but to each their I, own, just, I guess I think there's just enough things that bug me about it or that are frustrating that, um, I don't think I'm going to keep buying it because, or keep playing it because it just, it's just not worth it to me. I, I feel like there's better things I can do with my little bits of time. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's Pocket Trains by Nimblebit. I'm giving it a four out of five. It's probably worth a check out because it is free. I spent a couple bucks. Uh, the only thing that you can spend it on is consumables, which is my least favorite thing to spend real money on. Right. I prefer to, you know, get some sort of permanent power up. I, I mean, I mean, I want to support the developers, but. I just I want to have something that I can permanently power up as opposed to consumables. So. I've heard a lot of people online talking, and they were impressed that the developers um, only the the most expensive uh, DLC in the game is ten dollars, which in a game like this is they usually have like the fifty dollar pack and the hundred dollar pack or whatever, but they're doing it as um, as just ten dollars, which is uh, which is kind of nice. They're hoping that somebody's going to go out and buy ten of them. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. But uh, it's it's a game that's going to be a slow burn for me. I'm going to keep it on my phone and 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 try it every once in a while. But uh, but yeah, I, I hear some of the stuff that you're saying, and I, I definitely felt uh, kind of the same way. Well, a nimble bit's been great about post support, you know, post release support, bringing out things that make the game more interesting. Oh, so yeah. maybe you're right. Maybe I'll go stick it in a folder and bury it somewhere and wait until I see the next update come out and see if it it uh improves the game or not so. for sure and you can always can always try no uh, yeah no doesn't doesn't hurt to do that for sure all right so let's get to your review for the night lloyd all right cool well i'm i'm actually just uh tooling around with it uh right now as as you were doing your review i was just checking out some more stuff and i'm gonna be reviewing a game called um uh, you might have heard of it um both uh small franchises um and that is not true in the least uh angry birds star wars 2 uh available on the app store for 99 cents um and strange enough this one is universal so 99 cents gets you both the ipad and the iphone version which is odd because i don't remember that ever happening ever with a rovio game they always have the ios version and then they have the ipod uh, the iphone version and and um and and that's it um so this this is kind of a of a new thing for rovio and um and i think the reason why they did that is um this game is based around little physical toys um or at least that is kind of what they they made this one for um you don't need the toys um but you can buy these things called telepods and you take your ipad and you put this little thing on top of the camera and then you put the little tiny angry bird guy on it and then that little pod magnifies a qr code your camera reads it and then whatever that character is will just appear in the game um i i don't i don't care enough about angry birds to go and buy all the toys um i know my kids are um they absolutely love angry birds especially my daughter she plays angry bird space and angry bird star wars one like crazy she would be someone that would buy the hell out of these telepods um she would she would love it so hence she doesn't know they exist um because when <laughs> when she buys things it's actually me buying things because she is only six um but uh but yeah that's that that's kind of what the the difference with this one is it's a universal app for 99 cents and it's 
it, it's it's 99 cents. I mean, that's that's a good price for for this game. So Angry Birds Star Wars 2, um, the, the, the main difference with this one from a gameplay standpoint is each world um, has two sides. It has the the light side and the dark side. Um, so you can play each world as um, as um, kind of the good guys um, on the light side, um, or you can play the pork side, the dark side, with the, the kind of the pigs and some of the evil characters. Um, there's only two games or two levels or two worlds rather um, filled with levels in the game so far, and that is the first one, Naboo Invasion, and the second one is Escape to Tatooine. Um, so basically, what you do is when you first choose a world for the first time. It asks you, do you want to play as the light side or do you want to play as the pork side? And you choose. And then you can't play the other side until you get X number of stars on the levels inside of it. I think it's like 15 or something. I think 15 is the number. Um, so pretty easy to get. But still, if you get stuck, you're, you're kind of lucked out. Um, you, you've kind of lucked out in trying to play the other one. Um, so when you play the game, it, it plays like every other Angry Birds game, every other um a game where you you basically have x number of birds um in this case they're little star wars birds um and you have to um shoot them at different structures with the pigs um i'm telling you how angry birds works which is probably the stupidest thing i've ever done because everybody knows what, what <laughs> angry birds is um but but that's kind of kind of what this game and and the difference with this one is um with the telepods you can actually put any character in at any time and when you do that um, that telepod character will actually um, replace whatever character is on the um, the the launcher, the little um, the little launcher thing in the game. Um, so if you want um, really bad to play with um, Jar Jar Binks uh, for some strange unknown reason, um, you can do that. But Jar Jar Binks will replace the Yoda that is currently queued up, or the Qui, Qui Gon, or who whatever character that you're on. Um, I find that kind of odd, but that's that's the way this works. Um, and the other cool thing about that is um, you can actually buy power ups um, using the in game points and you can buy more of each of the characters. So if you don't have the telepods, you can still buy the power ups to do it. So instead of buying the physical toys, you can basically pay uh, your in game currency as long as you're winning it or pay real money to get the in game currency. Um, which then I basically say is why don't you just go and buy the toys if you're going to be spending your monies on things? Um, at least you then can play with little plastic rubbery figures um, on your desk if that's what you want to do. Um, but whatever, uh, to each their own, I guess. Um, but um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, the game pretty much plays out like every other Angry Birds game. Um, the, the interesting thing with this one is there's a lot of, of kind of special moves. So Angry Birds Star Wars kind of did that where you'd have the force push guy, you'd have the lightsaber guy. Uh, but this one has some really um, interesting characters. So you have Yoda. Um, when you launch Yoda, um, he'll basically just launch normally and if you touch the screen he basically pulls out his lightsaber and starts spinning around and every time he hits something he bounces so you can actually um, make it so that you can kill multiple guys or take out multiple structures with that um, there's um, um, basically other characters that, that do similar things um, to the old one so there's the force push guy there's the main lightsaber guy um, there's um, Mace Windu is in this one. And if you shoot Mace Windu, he actually throws his lightsaber as a boomerang. So you can actually get him. So he's basically on one side of a platform, tap on the other side of the platform. He'll throw his lightsaber. It'll basically cut through stuff um, and then come back. So you can actually tear down whole towers or kill a lot of enemies, which is really fun. Um, and then there's characters that have um, jetpacks. Um, that one's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a pod racer. So as you're playing the game, or as you're playing the level, um, there might be something where you see um, uh, something that looks like it can be destroyed pretty easily, but then something on top of it. So if you actually time it so that uh, you hit the pod racer, your rocket fires, and then your guy kind of trails in behind it. And you can kind of impact things in two different levels, which is kind of neat. Um, then there's Jar Jar Binks. Um, he has a grappling hook, and you can basically make him fling and do things. I hate Jar Jar, so I don't like that he's in this game, but I, I know a lot of people like Jar Jar, so that's fine too. Um, but yeah, that that's essentially what what's different with this one. 
one compared to most of the um, the the other Angry Birds games or the Angry Birds Star Wars game. Um, for the pork side, um, you basically can take on characters like um, the the little droids, um, Boba Fett, um, the Emperor. The Emperor's kind of cool. He fires lightning, so you can actually do a lot of damage with the lightning. Um, there's little droids that fire lasers and things like that. There's Darth. Darth Hog um, is in the game as well, has a force push kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the, the, the difference with this one is it's it, it there, it's so varied because each level can be played differently depending on what toys you buy or what little unlockables you have. Um, the other interesting thing about this one is as you play levels and you get points with each character, um, th- that character individually will level up. And at this, the first chapter of the game is called the reward chapter. And when you go into them, you actually see little pods with your characters on them, um, like the different characters. And um, when you've gotten to whatever the, the threshold is for, say, a Mace Windu or Jar Jar or Yoda, um, it, the, their pod will unlock. And then you get to play um, a specific level for that individual character um, that is basically set for whatever powers that character has so if uh, the character like uh, yoda is good at bouncing and stuff um this one has a bunch of different bubbles um so you want to basically have him go through going through the bubbles spinning at the proper time so he'll bounce around and come back through the bubbles to hit other things and it's just a fun little other thing it's kind of like a little meta game you want to do good enough to um to get enough points with characters. So you might be using characters that you don't like um, repeatedly to get points to unlock their their special bonus level and stuff like that. It's tied to achievements as well, which is which is kind of neat. So that's a little bit different, which I, I really kind of uh, kind of dug. So, yeah, I, all in all, it's um, it's more of the same. Um, a lot of people online have been saying it's like the easiest Angry Birds ever because you can kind of choose your character. Um, I like that because the later Angry Birds have been kind of um, annoying and I didn't really like them too much. <laughs> this one is um, much, much better because it's easily beatable. And then you can go back and worry about um, getting three stars if that's what you want to do. But you don't have to. Um, you can unlock other content other ways. So I really kind of dig it. For 99 cents, um, it's really good. Um, even without the toys, um, obviously it would be better with the toys because you get pretty much unlimited use of kind of the power-ups, or so I think. I don't have any of the toys to test it. Um, maybe I should go buy a starter kit just to try it out. Um, I feel kind of dirty even thinking about that. But um, yeah, Angry Birds Star Wars 2, um, 99 cents. Um, Universal app, which is really neat, so you don't ever have to buy it more than once. And it's uh, out right now. Um, it gets four out of five. I really dig it. Um, it's more Angry Birds. And I think it's getting to the point where they're kind of going once too much to the well. Uh, I'm really curious to see what Rovio does. Um, the whole car racing game that they're teasing with a bunch of different things. Um, or if it's a racing game or if it's a game using physics on cars or with cars. Who knows what it is. Um, hopefully that will be something a little bit different than what just angry birds is um because i think i think it's getting kind of tired and i think a lot of people are losing kind of their love of angry birds so we'll see what happens but i'm sure it's still going to sell a million bajillion kajillion quintillion um or what was the the word that you used at the start of the episode uh sesco centennial yeah it's going to sell sesco centennial um that's only 150 uh, ians um sesco sesco centennial ians um that's a new new one for lots of monies um and yeah it's going to be selling a lot of that um in the future still um but i I think it is kind of kind of getting old and i'm kind of growing tired of it so i hope they can mix up the formula a little bit but uh for 99 cents this is a great game there um there's more coming soon content like they always do um so for dollar this is probably the best um angry birds game um as as far as value for your dollar Uh, because if you want to play it on both the iphone and the ipad you're not spending five dollars to get it you're spending 99 cents and then maybe going out and buying toys if that's what you like so anyway angry birds star wars 2 99 cents gets a four out of five on the touch of gaming podcast all right man that's gonna about do it that is it that That is all that was a great show. <clears throat> that was good. We had a lot of news this week. It's kind of been a rare thing to get a lot of really interesting news to talk about. 
I kind of feel like the app store is coming back. Like, yeah, you know, iOS seven. I, I think the whole wait for iOS seven to, kind of sucked a lot of the life out of the, uh, the kind of the uh, the iOS market. And now with iOS seven out, all these great ideas that people are working on are finally coming out. But um, yeah, I definitely think you're right because it seems like they were kind of like you know, dropping off and a lot of things started to come out, you know, like, Mm -hmm. um, I've been excited about two or three games pretty much every week and I'm excited for another two or three games next week. So it's nice to see it, it kicking back in. I think you're right. A lot of people are holding their breath and waiting for iOS seven to come out. Yeah, exactly. All right, man. Well, that's going to about do it. Uh, we, we love hearing from you guys. Uh, you can head on over to vgpodcast.com and subscribe, uh, like us, um, follow us on iTunes, all that fun stuff uh, that we like people to do, um, do it over at vgpodcast.com. Uh, you can email us, vgpodcast at gmail.com, or you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 505-VG-PODCASTS. We love hearing from you guys. Send in your emails. Send in your questions. Let us know what you like. Uh, all that stuff. Uh, we'd love to read out your questions and comments in future episodes of the Touch Gaming Podcast. And check out all the other shows we do over at VGPodcast.com. We have Nintendo Pulse, um, which is our, our weekly Nintendo news show. Uh, up next, actually recording in a, in a few minutes, is going to be the bonus stage, which is our weekly general gaming news show. Um, got a couple other shows uh, on the network and a new one that will be coming in the near future, which um, isn't like any of the other shows we do uh, because I'm not the host. Uh, a little bit of a teaser there. So, what? Uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of odd. It's going to be exciting. Um, we'll have some more news of that over the next week or so. So um, check it out. Out everything we do at vgpodcast.com or at our YouTube page at youtube.com slash vgpod. All right, guys, take it easy, and we'll talk to you in about a week's time. Later. Have fun. <laughs>